Hello guys, welcome back to the Beastie Room. Now today we are going to have a little catch up and, a, and we're going to rehouse some special little spiders and they are in fact our Ornithonoctonae species Vietnam Silvers. Now we got these, oh must have been not long after lockdown actually. They've not been in the hobby a huge amount of time. And you may well have remembered when they first were announced into the hobby, I'm pretty sure it was the year after lockdown finished. And um, the shows had just started up again and these guys hit the scenes. And uh, they were fetching incredibly high prices as tiny, tiny little one centimeter slings. And that's what we bought these as, as one centimeter slings. We got a bit of a deal because of um, you know, because of the fact that we are going to breed them, and um, and we bought six of them, so uh, it was going to be for a future future project, which it still is. Um, now, an interesting thing is, is we often find with these brand new spiders into the hobby, these these uh, the, the the very new ones that come on, they do demand really high prices, and majority of them take a long time to start coming down. Not so the Vietnam Silver. Literally, I think when these first hit the scene, they were like £170 each as a one centimetre sling. Within, I think, within three months, maybe a little bit more, maybe four months at the very most, they dropped down considerably. And they were now, I think we were looking at around about £70, £80 a sling, £90 in some of them. So they had a massive hit very, very early on, which is quite unusual. Normally it takes a long time to come down. But now we are looking at maybe two years on, um, and you can pick these guys up now for reasonable money. They really are quite cheap. They're no more expensive than anything else. Um, but they are a very, very pretty spider from Vietnam. Now, you may have remembered a long time ago when we put them in these boxes, we rehoused them. These have been fed quite sparingly. So we're not we're in no rush to get them to grow up, basically. So they've been in these, and they now need to be a little bit spruced up, really. So we're going to give them a new a new home, same size container, but it's just it's about time that we uh, we cleaned them out and uh, give them something nice nice to sit into. So we're going to just use our regular potting compost now remember don't write in the comments what particular brand is it because it really doesn't make a lot of difference what brand you have what we do is we use the cheap stuff so if you go to any of your pound stores and places like that we uh, this is where we tend to get them this last lot come from in excess and um, we get a lot of it from them to be honest and it's, it's nice all I got all I try and do is I go for this fine stuff I do like the fine stuff I'm not keen on the really coarse stuff so we literally just use that it's nice and damp already these guys do like a bit of humidity we're gonna put a little bit more in Now, some people say these are terrestrial, and some say they're fossorial. I'd hazard a guess and say they are a bit of both. We've got some in here that in the early days would burrow down quite a lot. And you'll see, when we open the tubs up, it's um, they've literally flattened them really hence why we're going to give them a little bit of a spruce they don't need a lot of headroom so they'll be all right here take a little bit out of that one right this is an interesting thing come over here guys have a look in here this is regular cheap potting compost and what you will find in your potting compost are these these little balls, see them? 
there you go they're in all of it they're spread out all throughout it now these are nothing to worry about this is plant food and this basically breaks down disappears and um, into the soil and it's plant food it's there to feed your plants it is in no way going to upset your spider he's not going to be interested in eating that or playing around with it or doing anything else it is literally just plant food now this is something that um, has come up before and with our bioactive enclosures we've got to remember is we we fill them with soil then we add our plants and we do everything else once the nutrients is gone out of this soil our plant has nothing left to feed on and this is why quite often your bioactives will slowly start to die and you're thinking am i giving it enough light have i got enough water all these different things the truth be known you are practically starving your plants so what we do here is we actually use um, plant food in the water and then what we can do with a watering can we can spot water our plants and this is how you're going to keep your plants alive this is what they need just down in like they are now they will actually use up all of this and they will it will be no good to them in no time in short you know they um they demolish the food real real quick plants are quite hungry things especially when they're growing right so we're going to get some nice fresh fresh water bowls I'm just going to put them in there actually what we will do before we do that we'll add a little bit of sphagnum moss and hopefully by doing this this will help to hold some of the soil together when they start tunneling and doing their stuff don't need a lot just needs a little bit It can also help to hold some of the moisture in that soil as well. So what we can do is we can just mix that up. They will have a good dig around in this anyway. Now you see a real clever spider keeper would have made a big bucket of this, mixed it all up in a bucket and then just take it out and use as and when you need it. That's the easy way to go. All right, I'm going to put a bit of that in there. Do you know, it doesn't look very pretty, but it serves the purpose. And don't forget, once they start tunneling and digging around, making their bits and pieces. When they create their burrows, they will line their burrows in silk. And this will all help to hold this together. Now we often hear another thing gets mentioned quite a lot with fossorial spiders and different substrates and things. And that's people worrying about um, tunnels collapsing, crushing their spider. It's very, very unlikely to ever really cause you a problem mainly because your spider is in a limited amount of soil to start with and if it wants to dig it dig out that little cave in is absolutely nothing if you even get one i think with our spiders we've seen them where they do it all through the um through the front on the glass and we can see they line it all out with webbing and because of this we just don't get any any collapses and the potting compost is really good for that as well it works really well it's because it's a little bit coarser than things like cocoa fiber it does a better job in my opinion all right so that's our water dump all right we've got our six homes what we're going to do now we're going to spread them out and we're going to do one at a time and hope they behave because generally they are pretty good they can be a little bit 
flighty. I've not seen anything in the way of aggression from these guys. They don't seem to bother doing any aggressive stuff. But you can see now, well, this is all web. And it makes it look filthy, doesn't it? But this is all web. And you can see where they've just moved it all around. It's in real dire need of a, of a rehouse. We'll have a little look at that. You can just see the colours coming through on that as well. You know, I'm just going to get a couple of bits of bark. We didn't bother too much last time putting anything in there, like in the way of bark or anything, but I think we're going to give them the option. See if they want to dig down underneath. They might do. Always best to find out, see what they want to do. Again, see, you don't need a lot. Some spiders just like to sit out on top of something. Right, that'll do them. Hmm? You like that? Yeah. Very good. Right, so what we're going to do now is we are going to remove the water bowl. We don't need that in the way. So what we're going to do, we're just literally going to tip this over. And we're going to see if we can't get it to move over without having an absolute fit. I say they can be quite flighty. See that blue? Yes, we're just maintaining contact. Look at that blue. Isn't that absolutely stunning? Now with these guys, the females are this really steely blue colour. And it's sort of... um. To be honest, it reminds me of um, like mercury. I think they're absolutely wonderful looking things. Oh. We don't want to get a bit of light on there. See that? Is that showing up now? I bet that looks beautiful now. So yeah, the females, when they're fully fully grown, will be that lovely steely blue colour all over. And the males tend to be more of a brown, reddish colour. Now it's going to be interesting, we've got six here and they all look fairly much the same. They are a beautiful spider. Right, we're going to put the lid on this one. See that? Look at that. Now that actually ducked down then, as I put the um, the torch on the table, that felt that vibration, and that hunkered down. Marvellous. Right. We're also going to swap over our label. Make sure we put our label on. Shouldn't be too difficult identifying these guys. There's not many other steely blue spiders. <laughs> All right, here goes for another one. Let's see if we can't get these. We don't have to worry about the water bowl with this one because it's webbed in. Right, we'll try, we're going to try the brush in now, see if there's any difference. Make contact. Yeah, this is very, very fine. All we actually want it to do is climb out. That's it, you want to go up. Here we come.
tilt the box a little bit, might make him a little bit happier. In you go, come on. A little reluctant. There we go. Let's see what it looks like with a little bit of light on it. Yeah, not as shiny this one, is it? No. Possibly. It's got a larger abdomen than the other one. So yeah, that's an interesting point there. We do have a little bit of a difference in colour. Very pretty. Now there's very little known about these guys because the fact that um, they've not been around that long. So everything that we're doing now we are learning. But what we can do is we can treat them like other fossorial spiders, especially fossorial spiders from the same country. We can, um, we'll know that they're going to be very, very similar in their care. And this again is another thing that um, often pops up when people are looking, they get a new spider and they can't find any information. So they start to panic a little bit because there's just nothing out there on the internet. If that is the case, then all you need to do is look at a spider that's either in the same family or a spider that's very, very similar. And generally speaking, they're not going to be that much different. You know, you can get hung up on trying to be very specific with what you're doing. But generally speaking, most of what we do will cover most of the spiders in the hobby. There's only a few different little bits and pieces that, that are really that different. All right, we'll try this one. This one's very orangey. Let me try. Now, this one's quite dark as well. Just going to take it nice and gently. There we go. Yeah, this was a different colouring as well. See if the light makes a difference. No, another dark one. Now, is it possible maybe we have two males? The first one was a female, maybe. We've not managed to get any malts off of these to try them. But I think um, now we're getting settled in and we're getting back on track. We can um, we can start searching out the malts, finding them, and uh, start getting our A game back on. All right. Now, as we were saying earlier on about them being um, uh, fossorial and terrestrial, we've had um, we've had them doing both. So I think um, it will probably be like many of the other spiders that we see. They'll have parts of their life where they're where one thing, you know, so they may be a little bit more fossorial when they're um, young. And maybe they're a bit more terrestrial when they're older. Right, this one's tucked down in the corner. As you can see, they've absolutely webbed, webbed their enclosures up entirely. I think they're going to appreciate this little rehouse. These will be fine in these pots for another malt or two. And then we'll be looking at moving them up to their forever home. And we'll probably look at putting them in something like a 5 litre, really useful rub, something like that. And we might even just put some of them in... Um, in a fossorial setup and see how they get on there. But the next move that they have will be in into their um, their proper homes, and we'll be looking at looking at getting them on. 
A little bit more blue in that one, isn't there? Very pretty. Very nice. Now in terms of food, these guys will tackle a, a good sized red runner. There we go. They'll take a good sized red runner um, at this size, no problem at all. And then when they become adults, we'll be looking at feeding them dubias and a mixture of things. All right, let's get them in there. There we go. Two more to go. All right, let's see what this one's done. Oh, now this one's got a bit more colour about it. Very different build though. This one's quite leggy. All right, just watch this one. I think this one might be a little bit more lively. I think this one's hungry. You notice the way it checked out the um, the paintbrush then? Look at that blue. What we'll do is we'll get it in the box and then we'll try it. They don't always want to feed when they've just been moved, but whoa, 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 whoa. steady. Let's not be silly now. Look at that colour. Isn't that beautiful? So we're literally going to use the side of the paintbrush. Very pretty. So what we're doing is we're, we're trying to block off it coming down towards the desk. We want it to go back up. So what we're going to do is we're maintaining contact now. It's, we see how we're waiting for its legs to come up. It's feeling for where it's going. Here we go, it knows where it's off to. And we can keep it there. Right. Let's just get a, a photo. Very nice. Now we can try and turn this around. This is a particularly pretty one. It's well worth having a good look at it. Look at that. If we leave that for a second, we can... Um... Hmm? Isn't it? And you can see the colouring on the legs. You see they're steely blue all on the top and then on the bottom part, they've got this lovely orangey colour, very much like an OBT. Although a little bit, maybe a little bit more yellow. Really are very, very pretty. So out of this, actually, we've had so far, out of five, we've had two that are quite steely coloured and three that were um, quite dark. So it's going to be an interesting thing now to see whether um, whether that is the difference in the sexes or whether it's just a difference in the stage of molting. Right, we're going to try a cricket. Now this doesn't always work, but it might just frighten our spider straight out of the box. Or... He might just pounce on it. We don't want a particularly lively cricket, really. Stay calm, my friend. Oh, I think he knew there was a spider there then. <laughs> Here he comes.
That's it, Cricket. Investigate. <laughs> yeah. Look at the colour in there. Isn't that wonderful? I think she might take it, though. We're all saying she. We're living in Oak, aren't we? Right there. Now sometimes if we touch the cricket, it can be enough to make them freak out. So we really want him to come around on his own accord. A little tap. Oh, we'll try. We'll just tickle his antenna. Oh, oh spider's making his way. <laughs> it's like a game of chess. It's like he knows he's there. Oh, this is killing me. <laughs> I can't keep tapping him. Yeah. Yay! <laughs> that long that last. Right. Come on, turn him round. There you go. Look at that. We saw a takedown at long last. Look at that beautiful blue colouring. Really are an exquisite spider. Very, very pretty. Look at that. That just goes to show there that this, this spider is in really good health. Whoa, 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 whoa. whoa. Don't you dis disappearing on us. Whoa. Mm -hmm. Don't want you running out. You got your food. We don't want him to drop it now. Her, him, whatever it might be. You are impatient, my love. You've got to be patient. Right, we've got one more to do. Let's get this done. <laughs> well, so far they've all been really, really well behaved. And we were saying in the beginning that they are, can be quite flighty. But we've seen no aggression, have we? Which is unusual for a lot of the um, a lot of the Asian spiders can be a little bit naughty, and the fossorial spiders especially. There you go. Look at that. Yeah, this one's another dark one. Now you see, they're all very, very similar sizes. But we've got two that are really, really, really like steely. They've got a stripe of blue on their fangs and the top of their carapace. Mm. And right on the sides of their 
bottom. It's going to be so interesting to actually get some malts and then and then we can see see what we've got. That is fabulous. Look at the striping in the abdomen. Really nice. Now imagine when these guys get pretty big, I think they get up to about four inches or so, maybe five inches. They're going to be a very, very impressive spider. And hopefully next year we'll be able to breed these. They'll be ready to go. Right. What we'll do now is we will leave these to settle in and we'll feed them tomorrow. Apart from that one that's already had its food. That was rather cool, wasn't it? It was good to see that. And we need to take our labels off as well. We haven't done all of our labels. But um, yes, that, that is our Vietnam Silvers. A breeding project that's going to be really cool. Something that we're looking forward to. Now we need to get these, um, in terms of humidity, we're looking at a high humidity for these guys. Um, so we're looking at around between the 70 and 80% is more than enough for them, it really is. Um, we could, once they go to their forever homes, we can give them a little bit more depth in soil. I don't think it's gonna be necessary. They're not gonna be like the king baboon where he really does like to actually dig down. These guys seem to spend most of their time up high and um, and on the surface, they do, they do do tunnels, but as they've grown, they've got a little bit bigger, they're actually doing less and less. So, um, it's going to be an interesting thing. We'll keep an eye on it and see what happens. But we will set up a couple in a fossorial setup and see if it makes a difference, especially when it comes to pairing them. Hopefully we've got at least two females here and maybe the others will be males. So that won't be a bad thing. That'd be a cool thing. Um, yeah. Now in terms of heat, they actually like it fairly warm as well. As you imagine in Vietnam, these guys come from the, um, the tropical forests in Vietnam. And uh, so they like high humidity and they like it warm. Um, and they do have a healthy appetite. We've held these back a little bit. We've been giving them feeding sporadically. So I know a lot of you guys feed your spiders on a weekly basis. These have been fed more in line with every three to four weeks. We've been giving them a good sized meal. And they're coming on nice and slowly. Um, so this is just something that we're playing around with. As long as we can maintain that abdomen size, we don't need to worry about the frequency in which the food is coming in. But we can talk about that in another video. I think um, feeding things is, is a whole new subject all on its own. And uh, one that people get quite confused and het up about. And uh, yeah, it's a big talking point, but we'll, we'll cover that another day. Right then, well, I hope you enjoyed them. It's a nice, simple little rehouse. And uh, I say we will be doing them again, um, but we'll probably wait for another one or two malts and then they'll go to their forever homes. So that's really cool. All right, hope you liked them. And don't forget, be calm, be gentle, and love your spider. And I'll see you soon, guys.